Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. Go to have a look out over the next 10 to 14 days. Well, today's second video, day 10, is going to take us to the 8th of January. And we're going to be able to extend out beyond that. We extended GFS and ECM ensembles and maybe around a couple of weeks. Have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. It's going to get us uh, into the second half of uh, January. So I should get on back for you very shortly. Just say about the first video, it saves our 7 a.m. Uh, upload. Uh, no USA forecast today. Uh, all the additional add-ons, like you say, broadcast European outlooks, those kind of things are on the back burner this week, as it is Christmas week. I think we're back to normal uh, next week. Though. Please like, share, subscribe on the video. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Right, going to start off with what's happening in Alaska. So they've had some remarkable temperatures in Alaska. Instead of being freezing cold, as you'd normally expect, uh, the temperature in Alaska has been light into the teens Celsius, all being caused by this ridge of high pressure sitting in the northern Pacific. And that ridge is pulling up this very, very mild, or even quite warm, uh, southerly wind into Alaska from the uh, Pacific Ocean. This has been a pattern we've had quite a lot of over the years. We did think that this year, with the cold and average sea surface temperature, not as if you've been watching Winch updates, you'll know all about this. Uh, we've got cold and average sea surface temperature anomalies around here, and we thought that with that, you know, we would probably get rid of this ridge or reduce its influence anyway. But but it's still there, despite those cold and average sea surface temperature anomalies. This ridge is still here in the northern Pacific, bringing up this uh, warm air into uh, Alaska. But what this does also do, it pulls down cold air onto the western side of Europe. Well, that's what it's doing at the moment, anyway, it has been doing. And so, you know, like Oregon, been very cold. Uh, northern California has been very cold. I've heard from Jeffers that he had a foot of snow. Uh, the other day, my good friend Jeffers Craft had a foot of snow in uh, Northern California uh, a couple of days ago. So, of course, uh, we always say if one place is on the warm side of a blocking area of high pressure, somewhere else will be on the cold side and vice versa. So, the blocking area of high pressure is sitting there uh, and it's pulling up the warmth through there. But equally, it's going to be somewhere on the cold side of that region. That's Western America and, and Northwestern um, America and, like, Canada uh, as well. Look how cold it is across much of Canada. This cold is not yet making it much further southwards into North America, but it will start to do so a little bit more, I think, as we go into, you know, as we go further into uh, January. Other air temperatures look like that. So, again, there's where we've got that ridge sitting, pulling up that warmth into uh, Alaska. But look how cold it is, conversely, across most parts of Canada. And I say some of that cold air has got down into northern parts of America. We'll probably see that cold air uh, coming further south into northern America over the next uh, week or two. Classic sort of um, pattern, but we'll probably send the jet stream on a northwest southeast of line. And of course, what that may do for us is blow up uh, the jet stream. Let's come over here, blow up the jet stream uh, around Newfoundland and send low pressure in that direction. That's where we are, of course. UK is just there. Then we've also got West Europe as well. There is also um, cold air going into the Asian side of the Arctic as well. So if we come over here, we can see that going down into like uh, Russia, you know, Siberia, uh, eastern Siberia is cold, uh, down into parts of Japan even, uh, pretty cold there into China as well. So it's like on this Pacific side, the cold air is very much on this Pacific side of the Arctic at the moment, much less so on the Atlantic side, although we are seeing some cold shots into uh, western parts of Russia and uh, on off cold, you know, into northern Europe as well. It has been pretty cold across much of northern and northeast Europe over the course of this uh, December. Things have got a little bit less cold there now, but we're probably going to see things getting colder again across northern Europe actually in the next few days. But at the moment, we're sort of pulling up this really mild southwesterly uh, wind from, like, the, the tropical Atlantic. Uh, so uh, you can see that with those upper air temperatures. Yeah, it's always interesting to have a look at what's going on in terms of the wider pitch. I know a lot of people are thinking that, you know, it will never get cold ever again uh, for the UK. We'll never have a cold winter, we'll never have snow. But the fact that we see so much cold, you know, in parts of the Northern Hemisphere shows that the cold is still there despite the warming trend. The cold is still there, and uh, all it takes is the pattern to get into place. But the tricky thing is getting the pattern into place to deliver the cold um, to Western Europe. At some point, it will happen. Whether it'll be this winter, we'll have to wait and see. some point, we will get a winter where that high pressure gets into the correct position. You know, the block gets into the correct position to pull cold air into Western uh, Europe. But that's how it's currently set up anyway. 
across the Northern Hemisphere. Right, let's just have a quick look at CT. So that's on the rise now. I've uh, been predicting this over the past few days. Central temperature is currently standing at 6.0, an anomaly of 1.3 degree above average and provisional to the 28th of uh, December. That's going to finish up probably somewhere around 6.5, I would have thought. These are the GFS upper air temperature amplification ensembles for the next couple of weeks. The red line is 30 year upper air temperature average for London. Starting off very, very substantially wild average at the moment. It's going to be a really warm New Year, record breaking warm New Year, probably with temperatures such as mid teens, Celsius, maybe a little bit higher, might go to 16 or 70 degrees, uh, 17 degrees. There is a decline in the t uh, temperature coming up into the early part of January, though, that's 2nd of January, just there, by which time the temperatures are coming down. Actually, sometime around the 4th to the 7th of January and also I have a little cold snap but it's a period so uh, that wasn't shown a couple of days ago so yeah a little bit of a cold snap appearing around the 4th to the 6th of January nothing to get excited about we'll just bring, bring some frost maybe some wintry showers to northern areas and then after that hovering very close to the long term 30 year out uh you know 30 year average yeah, oh one or two cold outlier members just here but uh you know they are very much outliers there's no sign of anything really cold coming up up to the middle of january on that ensemble but it will certainly be cooler uh through the first half of january but but it is right now which can't be much you know it, that's not much to write home about because it's exceptionally mild at the moment so um probably a little bit mild average overall still uh into the first half of january but nowhere near as excessively hot really as it will be over new year precipitation wise uh rather dry where we've got this uh warm up in the temperature and um, makes us a little bit more and settled as we run on into the first half of January. So it looks like we'll bring bouts of rain in from off the Atlantic Ocean in quite a mobile sort of pattern. If we look at sea level pressure, we can see that at the moment, uh, sea level pressure is around 1,000 millibars. It is going to rise up to around 1,020 millibars and then kind of fall away a, a little bit again. Two metre temperature shows the, uh, the drop in temperature that's on the way. So uh, we're starting off very, very mild, if not warm, around 15 degrees, maybe a little bit more at the moment from around the 2nd, 3rd of January onwards, those temperatures will start to drop. And so as we get from the third, end of first week and second week of January, uh, we're down to around 5 degrees or so. So looking uh, quite cold at that point in terms of the snow row. Not much showing up, but there are a few snow spikes around the 9th and the 10th of January. So... You know, they're sort of outliers as well. No snow, certainly over the new year. And probably not much into the middle part of the month either. Uh, temperature anomalies on the 29th of December 6th of January. Our forecast to be warmer than average. Not just the UK, but for most parts of Europe. And precipitation anomalies from the 29th of December to the 6th of January will be a little bit above average in the north. A little bit drier than average further south. The latest wind flow map from EarthNoleSchool.net shows that we're drawing in those very mild southwest winds. This is a long fetch southwest. You drag this down here. We can see that southwesterly is originating from the tropical Atlantic and pushing all the way to the western side of Europe. Can't show you UK Met today. Half of it is missing for some reason. So we're going to show you Icon first of all. This is how Icon is looking for Saturday, uh, which is New Year's Day. Still drawing up. It's very, very mild, if not warm, southerly, southwesterly. Uh, on Sunday, that low pressure starts moving in from off the Atlantic. That brings stronger winds and rain in from the west. We're into flat westerly flow on Monday with uh, showers in the north and the west uh, on that brisk westerly wind. And then by Tuesday, that low pressure transfers towards Norway and we turn the wind into rather colder northwesterly. So becoming northwesterly, uh, polar maritime brings wintry showers probably into the north and a drop in the temperature. Uh, very quickly, that starts to back westerly again, though, by the time you get through to the middle of next week, Wednesday, 5th of January, that's backing it back, and that's backing it back into the west, and it becomes milder again. So just like a one or two day colder snap, and then we're back into mild westerlies once more. GFS uh, midnight run again, drawing up that very mild southwesterly wind, and then low pressure starts moving in from off the Atlantic. That will bring spells of rain with it. That low pressure then transfers eastwards, and we start to bring down something a bit colder colder from the north as we go through in towards Tuesday. 
uh, next week. And then by Wednesday, we're starting to that quite cold north or northeast wind. So the Sherpa's making a little bit more of that north northeasterly compared to the uh, Icon model. But eventually it's cut off, a high pressure then topples in. Will be quite cold with that ridge, probably bringing overnight frost and fog, however. And then that sticks around right way through towards the uh, first weekend of uh, January, or like the same weekend, I suppose that will be a January, won't it? As New Year's Day is Saturday. So that's 8th of January, high pressure, still bringing frost to England, where begin to get a little bit wider though uh, across Scotland. And then we're back into like zonal westerlies, uh, you know, Atlantic driven weather as you go through the second week of January. And again, another little cold snap pushes through there as that low pressure transfers into the North Sea, that pulls wind into the North again as we get through to the middle part of the month. That's a very long way out, of course. So this is how the 6th is looking. Again, low pressure out to our west, bringing up that very mild southwesterly wind. And then low pressure, you know, continues to dominate the weather as we go through into the early part of next week. Gradually moving southwards with a jet stream. Heights rising a little bit up towards Greenland and Iceland. That starts pulling something a bit colder again. Around Tuesday, Wednesday next week, have a bit of a cold snap with winds turning into the north and the northeast. That might deliver some snow showers or wind showers into the north anyway. And the high pressure sort of topples down uh, across the coast. Country brings lots of dry weather through the uh, second half of next week, but there will be frost with that. And then by day uh, by uh, day ten, which is the eighth of January, we begin to re-establish that westerly zonal flow. We go increasingly unsettled then as we move on, uh, you know, through the first week or the second week of uh, January up to the fourteenth of the month. As we go, have high pressure sitting over the top of the country, bringing lots of frosty uh, dry conditions. GM looks like this again uh, during up that southwesterly wind uh, over the new year and then early next week we cut that off we go cooler not particularly cold but we go cooler through the early part of next week outbreaks of rain some colder air digging into the north on that north or northeasterly wind by Wednesday next week we're looking pretty cold winds are in from the north and northeast this high pressure topples in from off the Atlantic, high pressure sits around the country as we go toward day 10. Uh, actually trying to get itself up to Scandinavia and pulling in a little bit of an east wind. It's not a particularly cold east wind, but certainly there will be frost and fog with that scenario from the GEM. Um, and then the ECM looks like this. Again, winds are coming up from the southwest as we go through New Year's Day. And uh, these uh, mild westerly winds continue into the early part of next week. When low pressure and transfers eastwards as we go through into Tuesday, start to pull cold winds in from the north. Then high pressure ridges in from off the Atlantic. So a little bit of a cold snap around Tuesday. Wednesday, uh, very quickly back into those milder westerly winds again, though. Uh, and low pressure driving in then up to day 10, looking relatively mild and unsettled. Well, Azores High is pulling away from us, so beyond that, if you go on another 24 hours, you'll probably see a bit of a colder snap from the northwest coming through that again. Once well, you get this new year out of the way, it does look as though things are much more typical then, and you know, not desperately cold, but certainly a lot cooler. And uh, much more mobility, and there will be some, uh, you, know, you know, fleeting cold snaps coming in game. Uh, Precipitation-wise, we look like this, so there's going to be plenty of rain around with this very mild weather, of course, warm weather even. Um, the open next week turns a little bit colder, and showers turn wintry, particularly into the north. There's going to be some snow, quite significant snow there for northern areas uh, around the 5th of January. And uh, we just keep it unsettled right the way up to the end of the ECM run. Further wet to ever through the central swing of the country, quite cold to the north, and a few uh, showers further southwards. So these are the options on the table within the ECM on summer today for day 10, which gets us to the 8th of January. 27 members of the ECM ensembles have low pressure to our north, high pressure pulled out to the west, and winds are in from like a westerly direction, so rather unsettled with showers or longer spells. Of the uh, rain with that, and uh, then we have 24 just here again with low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south, winds in from the flat west direction, flat pancake really. Uh, with that, so all looking very Atlantic driven and relatively mild in two weeks' time. These are the options that we've got gets to the 13th of January. 17 members of the ECM ensemble still look flat with low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south, income those westerly winds. 17 with low pressure right out of the country to be very unsettled and a little bit cooler. And then another 17 actually builds up a Scandinavian high and gets the wind into the east. So that's a minority option, but it's a possibility we might get a scanty high and easy winds by the middle of January. But the overwhelming majority option is sort of Atlantic driven unsettled and therefore relatively mild conditions to continue up to the middle of the month 
Uh, 7.62 finally, these are 500 mil bar heights broke down to meet peers. The first week peer takes from 29th December to 4th of January. The coming week will have high pressure to a south, low pressure weight to the northwest winds will be coming up from a west or a southwesterly direction. Looking relatively uh, mild, therefore, or quite warm even, and uh, re relatively dry in the south as well. Week 2 will be the 5th through to the 11th of January. High pressure to the south, low pressure is to the north. Winds are in. From a westerly direction, again looking Atlantic driven, and the most unsettled weather is in northern areas. Week 3 is the 12th to the 18th of January, with high pressure across central Europe. Low pressure is away to the northwest, the winds again coming up from that southwesterly direction. And then week 4 is going to be the 19th to 25th of January, with low pressure to our west and winds in. From the west, it all looks very Atlantic driven, wet, windy, and mild into the second half of the month. No sign of winter. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button, make sure you to the channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gals World Video. Thank you so much. Drop a comment, let us know anything about this and all of our videos. Right, just tell them tomorrow at 7 a.m. Uh, broadcast, and if that wasn't enough, we will have a 10 to 14 day for you as well. So keep checking back to the channel for more. But for this video, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.